she sent me a message. You don't need them, Liliana, unless you want to play disc jockey. You don't need them on. She sent me a message over the weekend saying that she was nervous about this because English isn't her first language. She didn't want to make a fool of herself. Have you not heard the show? That's my act. That's what I do. <laughs> it's dog training. That is a new business venture with courses in Great Oakley and Will Burst. And watch my chops dot com run by Liliana Harbert. How nice to see you, Liliana. Thank you Hello, for coming in. Thanks for having me here, Bernie. So where are you from originally? Well, I'm a bit of a mongrel, as we're talking about dogs. I am half Italian, half Spanish, born and raised in Switzerland. Lovely. There's League of Nations in you, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he, Riley, is German via Melton Mowbray. You going OK Pork with pie. Germans, do you? Yeah. <laughs> they are? They are riles. You've got a friend there already. Oh, uh, and you, you set up Watch My Chops uh, because you love dogs, pure and simple, yeah? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I've always had a really huge passion uh, for dogs. And uh, after rescuing one of my dogs, um, that just made me want to go further. So I sort of researched a bit and ended up uh, doing a course on uh, dog training. This is Susie, yeah? This is Susie, yes, my mutt. She's a, a German Shepherd Cross? Absolutely. German Shepherd Cross Collie, we okay. think. Okay. Uh, we can't be 100% sure because we haven't really got her history. But um, And often rescue dogs uh, have had trouble in their lives before. And, of course, you don't know what causes all the problems, do you? Because you weren't there when they were being abused or whatever life they had before. What kind of state was Susie in when you got to... Well, she, she was found, uh, that's as much as we know, she was found pregnant on the streets uh, near Peterborough, um, she got rescued at the puppies in a foster home uh, and then that's when we uh, we took her on um, and we started to discover the few issues she had. Possibly she hadn't been socialised at all because uh, she was scared of every single noise that you can think of. Hoover, uh, electric toothbrush, everything was just a big deal for her. So that makes training very difficult, doesn't it? It does, but um, with patience, a lot of patience and understanding on how dog learns then you you can you know you can make it and in fact Susie is a completely changed dog I'm not going to say that she hasn't got any issues because that's not going to be the case you know for a dog uh, that's been through what she has been through but uh, she, she's much much better I'm they, pleased to say they will stay forever largely won't they but they can be controlled a little bit the issues with love you know because the amazing thing about dogs I've found is that no matter how badly they've been abused by humans they go back for more from the human expecting it to be loved don't they absolutely if they realize that the human you know is, is a nice person to be around then they will you know i mean the bond i have got with susie is the strongest bond i've ever had with, with a dog it's it's unbelievable you know we we understand each other and uh, she she will do things for me and it's uh, it's fantastic but did this not put finn's muzzle out of place was he not upset you've got a basset yeah <laughs> yes i do <laughs> i love bassets <laughs> yes they, they are cute i but... love bassets my f dream dog was a basset was it yeah and then i looked into what was required of an owner and it wouldn't have suited my lifestyle you know and i still want a basset i have the name in my head i'm going to have a dog one day called seymour seymour that's seymour quite nice, like is a nice that. name isn't it you know we can come and meet finley anytime you like because you know, he's a uh, Yes, uh, smelly chops, I call him, but there you go. <laughs> they can be messy, can't they? <laughs> Very much so. So how does he get on with, uh, with Susie? Um, he was a bit surprised at first, to be honest, because she's quite a lively mutt, and he's so laid back, you know, and they had a couple of arguments to start off with, uh, but Finn has always been used to living with other dogs, right. so when my Cocker Spaniel... Uh, passed away then uh, he felt completely lonely and that's why we rescued Susie mm. and uh, I wouldn't say they're the best of friends but they tolerate each other <laughs> Company, I always think. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you wanted to train Susie. Where did you go? If you didn't have the training skills, where did you go? Well, basically, I did a lot of research because you hear so much controversy about dog training and I decided to um, take her to a special rescue dog group that was running at the time uh, where I live in Rothwell. Um, so they take things very, very slowly for the dogs because, like you were saying, most of the dogs that are rescued uh, have been abused in the past and they've got loads of issues so I went um, 
and train with her there. And uh, after that, I carry on training with her, doing a new um, doggy sport called uh, TD Rally, which stands for Talking Dogs Rally. Right. And it's a fun, obedience-based sport. It's all about fun. You know, it's not this serious stuff where people get really angry if they don't win or anything like that, because that's not my style. Yeah. And the training that uh, you implicate that you used on uh, Susie when you were learning was positive dog training, wasn't it? Absolutely. Now explain this because I've spoken to some people, um, some quite well-known dog trainers, who use, it seems to me, quite harsh and aggressive techniques. That's not what positive dog training is, is it? Absolutely not. So positive, it's re reward-based training. That's what it's all about and force-free training. By that I mean that we need to motivate the dog to do something that he will do for something he likes. So, you know, you wouldn't go, or maybe you would, but you wouldn't go to work just because your boss says so. You know, if you didn't get paid, you wouldn't come to work. So why should the dog comply to what you're asking of him? Not a good example for here. This, <laughs> well, is, no, this is largely charity work that I'm doing here. <laughs> If I'm honest, it's kind of reinforcing positive messages, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. So you motivate the dog and say, look, you do this for me and you get whatever motivates the dog. It doesn't have to, to, to be food all the time, even though that's something most dogs love. He like cheese. Absolutely. He loves a little tiny fingernail of Absolutely. cheddar cheese. And again, it's not about quantity it's about quality you know whatever motivates him and some other dogs aren't food orientated so they'll go for a game of ball or yeah. a tuggy uh, some will work for praise you know whatever motivates the dog and that's what positive uh, training is all about and often it can be frustrating can't it because it can't be done like that no know? and I, I, there's no point me asking you how long it's going to take because it's how long is a piece of string each dog is different isn't absolutely it? and that's what you need to bear in mind you know each dog is different you need to take it one step at a time uh, take it slowly some dogs uh, for example a dog who hasn't had an issue will probably learn a lot quicker than a dog that's that's been rescued for example and so yeah they're, they're all different and are there some breeds though and having said that they're all different are there some breeds that are uh, more adaptable or more amenable to to, to to training i always think that the labrador would be easier to train than say a poodle Oh, poodles are really intelligent, very smart. No, dogs, I'm not saying they're not. I'm they not, they learn very quickly. Yeah, do they? Yes, they do. Yes, but I would say, as a good example of a not very trainable dog, would be a basset hound, right. for example. Why? Because they're quite obstinate. Um, they. <sighs> Finn gets motivated by food, but it's not a big deal for him. You no. know, he rather lays on the settee and uh, as where Susie absolutely enjoys it. So, you know, that's just like, like people. We're all different. So. Some people go wrong by being uh, inconsistent, don't they? You have to do the same thing uh, every time. So uh, if you're telling the dog to sit and ordinarily it gets a reward when it sits, mm. there's no point not giving it reward when you're training if you tell it to sit is there absolutely i mean uh, again people very often say oh well my dog's going to get fat because i always give him treats but uh, the treats the tasty treats are learning tools basically training tools that's that, that's when you use them and in time it's not that every time your dog sits you need to reward him no. but you know it's a, it's a training tool so and consistency is one of the four golden rules in training so where um, did you learn this then do you need diplomas to embark upon a business like uh, watch my chops uh, yes I did a certificate again after a lot of research um, I found a course run by the uh, APDT UK which is the Association of Pet Dog Trainers uh, they only work with uh, positive reinforcement and force free so I went to Moulton College uh, to train there uh, then loads and loads of assignments and uh, I finally qualified at the end of last year good for you Thank Fantastic. you. <laughs> so now we've set up Watch My Chops. There's a website, just add .com uh, to it. Uh, is it classes in a group or one-on-one? -on -one? I've got both. I've got uh, puppy classes, adult beginners classes, rescue dog classes, TD Rally, uh, the fun sport I was talking to you about before, and one-to-one -one training as okay. well when people can't you know come to classes because of work commitments or, or whatever else i'll just go to them and if you're getting a puppy most puppies will will come into uh, ownership at what 11 weeks 10 11 12 weeks isn't it something oh, like that. a bit earlier eight eight weeks or so is that right i yeah. wasn't allowed him till it was 11 weeks, i mean it depends it varies on on the breeders obviously but uh, yeah you can 
have your pup by eight weeks. And start training as soon as you get them? Absolutely. The sooner, the better. Obviously, uh, with a puppy of eight weeks, you can't uh, expect big things, but a sit and uh, little things like that, and uh, it will uh, it will lead you a long way. You can't take them out. Can you until all the jabs? No, are until gone. all the jabs are, are done. No, you can't. But that's why you call Watch My Chops, and I come and do a one-to-one training session. And at the moment, we're in discount mode, aren't we? As well, we are in discount mode. We've got an early bird offer until the sixth of uh, May, so you get a twenty percent discount if you book any courses. Very good. The courses at the moment are Great Oakley and Wilbarston. Yes, right? Great Oakley Village Hall and Wilbarston Village Hall as well. Uh, the Great Oakley classes are on a Thursday evening, and the Wilbarston and ones on a Friday morning. Very good. Uh, well, if you like information, have a look at Liliana's website. It is watchmychops.com or this number, 01536 712 01536 712 I'm paranoid that he would let me down. It's been quite well behaved. He's been fantastically well behaved. He's a lovely, lovely dog. He's heavily sedated, Liliana. <laughs> drugged off his face. Thank you very much for coming in. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Bernie.